or six, you might see some questions on it. And it'd be good to challenge yourself to see if you can do it. But the applicability of anything beyond index three is doesn't, not very useful. Okay? That's why we kind of just focus on this today. But if you see practice problems with index four, index five, feel free to challenge yourself to see if you can get it. Okay? It won't hurt to try it. Awesome. Let's look at index three. We're going to simplify this radical. To simplify a radical means to take something from an entire radical to a mixed radical. Entire radical means that there's no coefficient. That means there's no number in front of the radical multiplying by the radical. A mixed radical has a coefficient. Okay, so just a reminder on our definitions. Entire radical, no coefficients. Mixed radical has a coefficient. When you're converting from entire to mixed, we call it simplify. Awesome. Back to step one. Let's simplify a radical. So we're going to simplify the cube root of 54. The index on this question right here, this is what I'm looking at. The index is a 3, right? So the little number is a 3. The radicand is 54. That's the number underneath the root sign. Just reminding you of some definitions. Awesome. Last time we simplified radicals, we created something called a perfect square chart. That means we went 1 to the power of 2, 2 to the power of 2, 3 to the power of 2, and we made that little chart on the right-hand side of our page. It was already made for you. That's because before today, it was always a square root, meaning index 2. If this is an index 3, what kind of chart do you think we're going to need to use? A power 3 chart, right? This is a power 3 chart. All the numbers that happen, well, the first 10 numbers, when you cube them. So 1 cubed equals 1, 2 cubed equals 8, 3 cubed equals 27, so on and so forth. If it was a fourth root, index 4, you would have to make a fourth chart, right? 2 to the power of 4, 3 to the power of 4, 4 to the power of 4, so on and so forth. So you can see how it's actually the exact same process. You just use a different chart depending on the index. This 3 here. Awesome. So I see the index is 3. I've made my chart. It's beautiful right there. What do I do with that chart? Anyone remember? I want to find the biggest number in this chart, the circled numbers on the right, that divides into 54. Okay, that's your goal. And you need it to be the biggest one. So as I'm looking at this chart, uh, I'm trying to divide into 54. So I don't have to do any of these really big numbers because they're not going to divide into 54. But if I go 54 divided by 27, and I put that in my calculator, I get 54 divided by 27 equals Awesome. So it worked. What this means is that I can rewrite 54. I can rewrite 54 as 27 times 2. And that's how division works. I could just go the opposite way and call it multiplication. Right, 54 divided by 27 is 2. That means 27 times 2 would be 54. So that's exactly what we do. If we go back to our radical. We say cube root 54 could be written as cube root 27 times 2. The reason that that would be useful for us is we learned a trick. And that trick was that if you have two radicands, multiplied together, which we now have, we can split it in half and create two separate radicands. There's one, there's two. And they are multiplied together, those two separate radicals. We just need to fill in the blank. 27 would be the first one. Cube root of 2 is the other one. Notice that they're both cube roots, okay? When you do these questions on your own, people tend to forget to write the index in there. Right? They just put square root 2. 
by accident because they don't put an index. So if it starts as a cube root, it's a cube root for everything the whole way through. Fantastic. The reason that that is useful to us, that splitting in half, is one of the radicands is a perfect cube radicand. Right? We picked it specifically from this chart. The cube root of 27 can be calculated to be a whole number. When you put that in your calculator and get a whole number, it equals 3. The cube root of 2 cannot be calculated. If you put it in your calculator, it's a decimal, like an irrational decimal. We don't want that. So we leave it as cube root 2. That means I've now converted this to be 3 times cube root 2. Because this is timesing, we wouldn't actually write the time symbol. We would just make it a coefficient. And it would look like that. 3 cube root. Ring a bell? Seem kind of familiar? At least a little bit? It's literally the same process with a different chart. That's all that we're doing differently today versus Monday. It's the exact same. Awesome. Let's practice a little bit. So we've got a bunch here. We got cube root 6,000, cube root, or fifth root 320, and cube root negative 16. We're not going to do B as a class. The reason we're not doing B as a class is because the index is a 5. Maybe we don't work with indexes beyond 3. If you want to challenge yourself, feel more than welcome. <coughs> All right, we'll look at A together. Cube root 6,000. The first thing is it says to simplify. I need to know what that means. That means convert so it has a coefficient. That's my goal. I need to get a coefficient a number out front. To do that, I need to find a number that divides into 6,000. I'm looking for the biggest perfect cube number that would divide into 6,000. My perfect cube chart is a little bit above me, right? It's on the right-hand side. It's on your piece of paper, so, so it's right there. The biggest number that divides into 6,000 is 1,000. So that means I could change 6,000 to become the cube root of 1,000 times 6. I got those numbers by just taking my calculator, going 6,000, and then dividing by perfect cube numbers. Yeah. you do 6,000 divided by 1,200. You could. So that would be a bigger number that divides into 6,000. But we want the biggest number that's from this chart. So it has to, and that's a good point, because we just did prime factorization, where we were just dividing by the biggest number possible, right? But what we want is to divide specifically by these numbers. Yeah. Go ahead. So will that be on our test? This chart will not be given to you on your test. Okay, so you'll have to be able to either make it yourself or just know it yourself, one way or the other. To make it yourself, it's pretty easy. You just go 2 to the power of 3 on your calculator, hit that 2. Awesome. Any other questions about these numbers? Where they came from? Why I use these numbers? Okay. The reason that's beneficial to us, we can cut this thing in half. When we cut it in half, we now have cube root 1,000, cube root 6. And they're multiplied together. The reason that's useful for us, whichever one of these came from your chart can be calculated. That one came from my chart, it can be calculated. I can put that in my calculator. When I do cube root 1000 in my chart, I get 10. That's now my coefficient. The cube root of 6 is just on the side. Mr. Gardner was looking at it through the window. Of fun. He left. That's simplified. That is my final answer. The reason I know it's simplified and the reason I know it's my final answer is the number 6 cannot be divided by any of my perfect cube numbers. Right? I, it's not divisible. I couldn't go lower using my chart. 
Fantastic. Let's try this one. We got the cube root of negative 16. The first thing I notice is that it's a cube root, so this little 3 to index. That tells me I need to use my cube chart. Okay, that's the one that's on the same page as us. The next thing I need to do is I need to look at that chart, and I need to figure out the biggest number that divides into 16. The biggest number on that chart that divides into 16 is 8. That means I rewrite this to be the cube root. And I'm going to give the negative sign to the 8. So it's negative 8 times 2. We will always give the negative to whichever number is the perfect cube. Okay, because we want the negative to go out front into the coefficient. That's just the proper way of doing it. It's not wrong if you don't do it that way. It's just proper. Awesome. Now that we've divided our radicand into two radicands, that means we can divide our radical into two radicals. Radical. So the cube root, negative 8. The cube root, 2. The reason that's beneficial to us, whichever one came from our chart can be put into our calculator. The cube root of negative 8 equals negative 2. And then cube root 2 is still just cube root 2. So my mixed radical, or my simplified radical, is negative 2 cube root 2. 